24th time in franchise history, the Bears will play for the Calder Cup. It means everything. That's why you start every season. You always want to win every single year, and anything short of that goal is a disappointment. This line's going to get us going, and everyone else will. When you do win, it'll change your life forever. You're a champion, and you're a champion for life. Nobody can take that away from you. It's Calder B. Calder. We're Bears. You're etched in history if you can get it done. Well, now low, bouncing around. Borgs from after it. In front. Oh! Oh! The Bears have done it! What was the first time that you came to watch a Hershey Bears game? Uh, 1948. 1948. This is one of the most storied franchises yeah. in the American Hockey League, in, in hockey, period. Absolutely. And you have witnessed, of all the Calder Cups this team has won, you've seen all of them but what, two? Two. There were two that you missed. Two out of 11. Two out of 11. Yes. That's back incredible. Back the first two years. There's definitely, uh, you know, a big historical part here. The fans talk about it. When you arrive here, it's one of the first things that's mentioned. It's like, you know, this is a historical franchise. You see pictures all over the walls. You see, you know, old players coming back, watching the games. The people kind of really put an emphasis on it. It's a, it's a great city. I love it. You know, you go to other places sometimes in, in the American Hockey League and you realize that you kind of I mean, nothing against those places, but you're kind of lucky to be in Hershey. I think it's a really good spot. And then definitely a lot of history, and I think they take a lot of pride in that here. So it, it's, it's really fun. You know, one of my favorite parts of coming back here are when, you, as soon as you walk in the door, you've got all of the team photos from all the teams that have won. It's been a clear message since day one I arrived in Hershey with all the Calder Cup paraphernalia and the pictures of the, the guys and their war wounds and, and just the sacrifices they make. You could see it in their emotions in these pictures and you're etched in history if you can get it done. It gives me chills just thinking about it. 2005, 2006. This is the Washington affiliation and yes. kind of where it yeah. all began. Right. So April of 2005, Washington and Hershey signed up. The year before, the team hadn't even made the playoffs. The year before that, they hadn't made the playoffs. Right. But you couldn't kick off an affiliation any better yep. than with a Calder Cup. Yep. And that's that tradition and that depth that the Caps and the Bears have had for almost 20 years. So you were spoiled too. I was spoiled, you're right. Yeah. I just got two in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Working for the team, at the end of the day, I just want them to make it to the NHL. And it's hopefully that's with the Washington Capitals. I mean, the reality is, is that there's only a certain amount of spots. So even if it's somewhere else, it, you get a pretty rewarding feeling when, when you see these kids achieve their goals. One of the deepest AHL teams for really two yeah. years, 08, 09, 09, 10. A lot of players that Caps fans know that were on that team. John Carlson, Jay Beagle, Braden Holtby, and they ended up winning a Stanley Cup, but they got their roots here. Yeah. And that's, I think, for the players that are on this team today, like, I think that's important. Yeah. They, they see those faces when they walk in the door here. Yeah. They, they know, as a kid, they want to play in the NHL. All right, you got to go through the steps. And one of the stops, if you're lucky, is in Earth. This is a nice step. But the importance of just being in a winning environment, in a winning culture, you know, like, hopefully down the road you'll see five or six of these guys down in Hershey kind of move on together. Having that, that winning pedigree coming from Hershey, I think that's something that carries with them to Washington, hopefully gives them more success here. It's a very historical team. They won 11 championships. It's an expectation for the Hershey Bears to be playing for a cup and winning championships. It just is. And it would be a tremendous honor to be linked up with those past champions. guys are ready. 
they're excited to play a game because they haven't played in 13 days. The Hershey Bears have their sights set on a 12th Calder Cup. Round one for Hershey was a bye. Round two, Charlotte. Down the right wing of Charlotte territory. To LaPierre, back to the middle of Protus. On the back, cuts in front, it scores! Alexi Protus right underneath the crossbar. Tyoria with the far side ends. Thanks the slapper. Back to LaPierre on his skates, right wing down. Well, they score! LaPierre the goal with Protus in front. The Hershey Bears will take game number one. That line with uh, Protus, Annis, and LaPierre, they've been really solid from the get-go, and, and there definitely is some chemistry there. I like that line combination. It's not being broken up, that's for sure. Uh, we're just going to stick with it. Iorio, Annis gets it in front again. He scores! The Bears come into Charlotte. They take game one. They take game two, and they're coming home with a chance to sweep the series on home ice. I think we're having a lot of fun. It's a really, really good group. I think everyone's just kind of embracing the moment. Playoff hockey is back in Hershey. The Bears go for the sweep. The crowd's electric. We're underway. They give it away. Annis a steal. A break down the right wing. A three on one. Annis with Cronus. Waits and holds. Dukes and scores! Annis does it himself. He roots it. And the Bears grab the lead. It's one. Nothing Hershey. Ever since I first came down here, I noticed it right away. The guys welcomed me right in. It was just a really tight group, and I think we all got each other's backs. We have fun being around each other every day at the rink. Game four tomorrow night will be necessary. It's a 2-1 final as Charlotte picks up their first win in the series. We all are in this together, and we, we are a family. That's just the, the way it is around here, and we all care for each other, and uh, there's nothing more that I want to see us succeed, and even in failure, we, we all have our backs, and it's, um, it's a special feeling. Riley Shunner to take the opening face shot. We get to a game four is underway. Malenstein going to roll in. Manunin back to the goal, hit hard by Malenstein, and it breaks the glass. The pain goes flying onto the ice. What a hit by Beck Malenstein. We went into playoffs, and we wanted to make it hard on teams, right? We just tried to, you know, bring that physicality, and it's been fun. We like to we like to just go out and cause a little havoc. The Bears, six in a row, and they're going to win game number four, six to two, and they're moving on to the Atlantic Division Finals. You feel like it's family and we play for each other and we win for each other. That's what makes us successful right now. It's kind of our organizational philosophy on how to develop players. A regular season AHL game, you know, if you try to compare that to a regular season NHL game, you know, it's obviously not the same level, but like a first round playoff game is starting to get a little closer. And by the time you get to the finals, you're playing really good hockey. So our goal is always to have our prospects playing the best possible hockey. And to do that, you got to go deep in the playoffs. So we try to get more veteran guys, but can be good call-ups for Washington if needed. Other guys we bring in are more straight AHL guys that we think can help the team win. You look at guys like Aaron Ness and Mike Vecchione that were wearing the A's. It starts with them. Protoss is another guy that came down with a great attitude. You know, he just, he wanted to win. He wanted to do whatever he could to help the team. I thought it was fantastic that we were able to get a good run here for guys like Connor and Hendricks because for Connor, we're hoping his role is, is even more important next year with the Caps and to have him go through this, I think it just makes him more NHL ready. And, and Hendricks just kind of tops off a first year and on a real high note. You know, you have good veterans, you have guys in the middle, and then you have good uh, young guys. That's, uh, you know, a recipe for success. Roar! Go Bears! Welcome to the Atlantic Division Finals. The Hershey Bears, the Hartford Wolfpack, in a best of five series. They got the face off, second power play unit down. Logan Day right wing to Sam Anich. An electric playoff so far. Went to the finals last year. Blue line, Day strong. Score! A power play goal for Logan Day. His first goal is a bear. The lead cut in half, it's two to one. Logan Day, this guy is ice in his veins. <laughs> he sits back in the rocking chair and he makes plays that a lot of guys are afraid to make. And I made a heck of a play on the goal. 
We have a lot of interesting characters on our team. I think that's why we're so tight. Peel on the back check, intercepts it, sends it ahead to Borgstrom with Snively two on one. Borgstrom to win it on the right wing. Shoots and scores! Henrik Borgstrom! The comeback is complete! The Bears take game one, three to two! Having not played in the first round, I was super fired up. I was just looking around and like, you know, watching the fans and all the guys going at it. And I, I was just thinking to myself that this is, this is so cool to be, uh, to be playing again. Bears getting ready for game two with a Hartford Wolfpack. Snively with it, one minute gone of the man advantage. Snively works it in the slot, down to Morelli, cuts and shoots, let's go! Mason Morelli, fresh onto the ice, walks in and slides it low for a 1-0 Hershey lead. Frank with Saru, cuts it and shoots, deflected just wide. Marks will get it back, he centers. They score! Mike Vecchione from the slot, he buries it. Borgstrom sets it up, it's 3-1 Hershey. I guess like I'm the I'm the first guy to be roaring out there. You're the, the OG. The, the dumber guy to go out there and start roaring at guys, but I was kind of goofing around in training camp. You know, we had a shootout. I scored, came down the bench, and just gave like ah, and then, like everyone was just barking at me. And I was I was like that was pretty funny, and then it just caught fire. Ah! Ah! We've brought guys along with, with the roar, and it's just become our identity. It's a blast, and a lot of guys going to the flyby doing it now, and it's definitely part of this team, for sure. It's awesome. You know, we're the Bears. We like to roar, and just happen to be a bear, and you know, be roaring out there. The chocolate and white take a stranglehold lead on the series. Vax is just a great guy in the dressing room, a great leader. Great professional, and he had some up and downs. He, he's a, such a competitive guy, and, he, and he's and he's hard on himself. He's battled all year. He's been that guy that's uh, stepped up in key times, and he just wants to win. Hershey Hunford underway. The Atlantic Division Finals Game Three. Mcioni ahead. Iorio breaking in. Vinny Iorio scores. Iorio top corner, and the Bears have tied the game at one. It's a really fun group. It's one of the best groups I've been a part of. And uh, for our first year, for the young guys, it, it's it's truly been some special. And you know, hopefully we keep riding the wave. Emerson lost to Vecchioni. He'll center in front. Johansson shoots and scores! Lucas Johansson! The Hershey Bears bring out the brooms, baby! They sweep the Hartford Wolfpack, and they're headed to the Eastern Conference Finals! Ah! It's really special, and it's fun. You know, there's a little something extra right now that you don't see during the regular season, and you can kind of feel it, so it's really fun, but we're not satisfied. We, we want more. Uh, I think we learned after the first period, the killer instinct, that's what it comes on to, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's killed or be killed, and we're bears, so. Yeah. Yeah! They never played hockey in the end of May, beginning of the June actually, and uh, I mean, we're so excited. So we had a two tough series, now it's time to keep it going and uh, don't take the foot off the gas and just keep playing our game. The Eastern Conference Finals are underway at Giant Center in Chocolate Town, USA. The two oldest teams in the AHL. McMichael with some room, it's McElrath in tight. That can on goal, Subban the save, they jam away at it, but Malcolm Subban will smother it and cover. Elon on the right wing, rolled in on Fucali. The Bears goaltender will cover it. Back to Rath going at Warren. He's going to take a penalty here. Gave Warren a shot. And Mack Rath getting his money's worth. I call him the sheriff. He commands a lot of respect. And, you know, there's not many guys that are willing to look him in the eyes and, and, and do something about it. You know, he opens up the ice and plays so hard for us and just, just totally hard on his sleeve. We just, you know, we love to go to bat for him because he does that for us. And he's one of those guys when he when he says something, everyone shuts up and listens. Just the ultimate, ultimate leader and best captain I've ever had. 
I'm honestly just being myself and I think everyone else is too. No one's trying too hard to be something they're not. All I wanted to do is make sure that we're all having fun and on the same page and working hard towards a goal to compete for a championship. Our captain, I mean, he just puts in the work every day that, you know, you just watch him and, you know, you kind of want to live up to that standard. We're lucky to have guys like that for sure. Rochester came in and played their game and imposed their will on Hershey. And for the first time this playoffs, the Bears will trail in a series heading into game two. Now the guys understand in that room what we're up against. It's a very good hockey team. They're here for a reason and they deserve to be here. And so it's going to be a battle on come Thursday. It's playoff hockey. You know, it's not going to be easy. I think it's part of playoffs. There's going to be ups and downs and, you know, you're going to have momentum swings. And that's why these games are so much fun, right? Because everything's so meaningful. And, uh, you know, I know that group and that's a tight knit group in there. And we're going to we're going to come back next game and play a lot better than that. Everyone's a good team at this point. That's why everyone's here at this time of year. Everyone's intensity has to ramp up each round. I think myself and uh, my other line mates, that's, that's one of our jobs. So I think if we can continue to do that, I think we'll have a good chance. guys just know that we're always in the game. Our, our guys never quit, and that's a testament to the leadership in the room. Game two of the Eastern Conference Finals, underway at Giant Center along Hershey Park Drive. Plays ahead, who leaps in over the blue line, leaves it left wing, gets it back, shoots! What a save by Shepard! Sprawled across to his left, highway robbery there! That's a big save and a confidence booster for Shepard early. He's crazy. He's, a, he's a, well, probably one of the best goalies I've ever played with. You know, if you make a mistake, he's there, and uh, he usually shuts the door. Hunter Shepard on the redemption tour in game two. A shutout for Shepard in the Eastern Conference Finals is tied up at one. Sheppy's definitely uh, one of a kind. Yeah, I mean, he was the backbone all year. It's Shep, man, he's a gamer. When you're at the rink with him, he's got his headphones in, even if it's just practice, and he's doing his pregame routines, and trying to talk to him will just walk right by you. He'll stare through your soul and just be on with his day. An electric atmosphere in Rochester. The Flower City decide for game three of the Eastern Conference Finals. Needs Shep to continue his strong play. Yeah, no doubt, look, he didn't make it to the third period in game one, and, and he really refocused himself. We have full confidence in him. He'll get the job done, and that's a very special feeling to have, and uh, we're, we're lucky to have him for sure. It's a 4-2 win for Hershey in game number three. They take a 2-1 lead. He's a specimen. He's, uh, he's definitely dialed into his work, and he certainly shows up to play, and you know we want to make sure we give a great effort in front of him because uh, you know he's always uh, you know bailing us out back there. Fingers all over the Amherst here, down by two. Delancey Brodis centers to the middle, Johansson's in, taps it, and scores! Lucas Johansson, and the Bears have cut the lead to two to one! I don't think we've played a team with that much skill in a while. You can defend them well, and they still find a way to, you know, create quality scoring chances. Clock work to the middle for Rochester, Sacconi, down the right wing, big save by Shepard. Let's face it, when we won these games, these tight games, Shep was a big part of that, and the guys all realized that. And we realized that, you know, like he can take us to the promised land. Three straight for the Hershey Bears, and they're coming home. One win from the Calder Cup Finals. lot of excitement in Giant Center. The fans are hungry. Why? That trip to the Calder Cup Finals on the line. Shot from the point, they score. And the Bears are on the board. A wrister from the center point, Alexei Protis. 
gets a stick on it. It's a 2-1 game. Empty net to seal it. Game number six is going to be necessary. This series is heading back to Rochester on Friday night. Now, there's a bit more pressure, obviously. The positive thing is, is that we play well in their building. So uh, we have to do it the hard way. We're pretty confident. That's confident group. So now we just got to go there and take care of business. Game number six of the Eastern Conference Finals. After the Rochester Americans staved off elimination, the series shifts back to Rochester. And for the Hershey Bears, maybe that's not a bad thing. They have been road warriors all playoffs. Brodich, little line back to Raphael Fire. Stick saves Shubayan on the redirect in front from LaPierre, who's engaged with Pilot. And both players are going to go to the penalty box here. We'll skate for a side. Carlson is center for Hershey. Clamp wing to Malenstein. Shots down too bad. Read them. Score! Shane Gersich is first to the playoffs. And the Bears have a 1 0 lead. We have four lines that can play against any line. It's a tight knit group. They, they're happy for whoever scores that big goal. There's no selfishness. But that certainly does help you get over the hump in playoffs. Puck brought in along the right wing. Knocked back down to Rusek. Five to go. Far corner. Murray to the net front. Knocked away. Two seconds left. Clear to the boards. And the Bears have done it. They're headed to the Calder Cup Finals. A 1-0 shutout win. The two oldest teams in the AHL square off, and it's the Bears, the beasts of the East. A 1-0 shutout for Hunter Shepard, and for the 24th time in franchise history, the Bears will play for the Calder Cup. Huge effort from everybody, just unbelievable. Now it's going to be like final, final battle, so we got to be ready for that. We passed the first three tests. Now we got the final test coming up, oh, yeah. right? And guess what, boys? We're going out west. Yeah! We got to go back out and get the Easter Cup. Yeah! Let's go get it! Hey, I'm not touching it. No, not the one we need. All right. When you're new to the league and you get an opportunity like this, it may seem that it could come every year, but the reality is, I know a lot of players around the league, some peers and friends of mine that have, haven't even made the playoffs. So when you're in this position, you gotta soak it all in and make sure you're enjoying the ride and, and definitely take advantage of uh, the opportunity. What does Hershey Bears hockey mean to this community, to you to the folks who come here night in and night out. What's it mean? Everybody knows Hershey. Even non-hockey fans know the Hershey Bears. Yeah. So uh, obviously guys love to come here. Many of them stay. And uh, it's just a great place to be. This is probably the best place to play in the league and, and to win it here with, the, with all the fans that we have. I mean, it's a small city, but they still show up and, and support us every night during the, during the year, and that's it's been a big part of our success as well, that, that we know that we have the, the best fans in the world that backs us up and support us every night. The history, the tradition, the hockey excellence, I mean, best team in the league. I mean, here, the special special fans, special organization, one of the best fans in the league, and they just want to wanna win, you know? You just will remember that forever, and we'll do whatever we can to get there. This is a small town. The fact that you have, what, 14, 15,000 people in Hershey proper and a 10,000-seat building, that's part of the uniqueness of this place. Of course. You know, when this place uh, gets rocking with 10, over 10,500 people, there's no better spot to be. It's like having a, a seventh guy on the ice. That's how important these, uh, these fans are. Every round that goes by, you feel that buzz get uh, that bigger and bigger and, and just the excitement level in the city. So it's something that, that we don't take for granted and we want to do for this city and this fan base. 
fathers and sons and mothers and daughters and coming to games and it's generational. You yeah. had season tickets with your parents, you had yeah. season tickets with your kids. I mean, that's kind of what this place is all about. Yeah. That's why hockey yeah. matters so much. Yeah. I and mean, this little oasis right in the middle of central Pennsylvania <laughs> that has this deep hockey history. It's just, it's marvelous. From Palm Desert, California, the Calder Cup Finals, the Hershey Bears, their 24th appearance all time, led by first year bench boss Todd Nelson. Meanwhile, the Firebirds, this is their inaugural season. The going to get us going, and everyone else will. Oh, bro, we got back! Yeah! Yeah! Hershey, yeah! yeah. Hershey, yeah. They had the mojo going in their in their building. Their fans supported them really well. Connor McMichael powers around long. Nice to center. One on three over the blue line. Coast to coast. McMichael's in. He put it just wide. They're a veteran team. They had guys over there that have won cups in the past, and having that experience, it, it helps them. Yeah, yeah. Bears just looking for a little momentum for Saturday. Well, right now, it's not looking good for the chocolate and white, unless they get their game going in a hurry. Almost had them. But I knew if our guys could play the way they were capable of playing, they would find a way to get it done. No luck in game one for Hershey for the second consecutive series, and they're going to fall on the road for the first time. Coachella Valley has a 1-0 series lead. They're a great team. They played really well, and obviously, uh, you know, a lot of guys myself included, have a lot more to give uh, next game coming up here, and that's what we're going to start to focus on now. Our team has to be a lot better, and we can be. The positive thing is that they haven't seen, seen the Hershey Bears yet. Palm Desert, California, game two of the 2023 Calder Cup Finals. Oh, baby. Game one did not go as planned for the Hershey Bears. A 5-0 loss to Coachella Valley. They really flexed their muscles on home ice in game one. They took it to us those first two games. Very skilled team, very fast. Another period without a goal. They just got to leave it all on the line here. Set the tone, have their best period of the series. It was hard. I mean, they scored four or five goals each game, so that kind of gave us a little bit of an extra heads up how good of an offensive team they were. Joey DeCourt covers it, and a penalty call here. Now it's going to get nasty. Valenstein took down a Firebird penalty call coming up. Johansson screaming, and Hayden Iorio's lost his helmet. 3.3 to go. And the officials might have their hands full before we're done. It's uh, it's obviously frustrating for anything. You know, you, you go two games without a goal. That's 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 tough. For the Bears, they'll go home scratching their heads and dig in deep with their season on the line at home. They must win game three to make it a 2-1 series and get back in it. We dug ourselves a bit of a hole, and game three is very important for obvious reasons. What does it mean to you to have been here your whole life and being around the Hershey Bears? Well, looking back, whatever the last game is this week is going to be tough. Because you're retiring? Yes. And after how many years of being here? Well, this will be 54 years covering the Bears, plus the five years as a kid. It'd be awfully nice if they set you out a winner. That's what I'm saying, but they're really making it difficult. <laughs> well, they just want maybe a little drama at the end. Maybe they're just waiting to send you out with a flourish. Maybe I need to go talk to the guys. Maybe you need to go rally and say, look, it's been 54 years. I need to do this one more time. Don't let me down. <laughs> Calder Cup Finals. Oh, I think it's wonderful. They need to get on the ball, though, and win this next game. Yes. Shepard will have to be good, but the Bears have to find a way to beat Joey Decord. He's been a wall. He's played them all. They'll have to beat him tonight. They want to do it early. They get to that goalie. We're going to win. The Bears is five on four, and it's across. Left wing. Frank will shoot. Thank you.
Chocolate Town. As soon as we got back in front of the hometown crowd and the Giants Center was rocking and Frankie scores a huge goal for us and it just lifted the, the monkey off our back and, and the guys settled in. Hershey steals to center ice, behind the defense, Snively, down the left wing. Elon is Snively in front, he scores! Go Snively! Firebirds coughing up, Elon with the steam, in the slot with the puck, shoots and scores! What a response! Derek Peon popping over the glove. The Bears back up by two. It's 4 2 Archie. When you get that confidence and, and knowing that you can beat a goalie, and then the team starts playing well and they believe in each other and they believe they can get this done, it was great to see that. You could hear a pin drop at Giant Center right now. Coachella Valley, two in a row from Cameron Hughes, and it's 4 to 4. We head to overtime, shutting down. It's right there, boys. Hey, come on. Right it all starts with our leaders, right? You know, Mac and Nesser and, and Vex. And we all kind of followed them and piggybacked off of them because they've been there before. And so I think the biggest thing was to just take a breath and, and relax and, you know, really feed into our home crowd. Valenstein will knock it in. Puts it behind the goal. Sutter after it. This line could do it. Sutter along the near win. Valenstein lost to stick really in front of the court. The same rebound. That's the loudest I've ever heard the Giants enter, and it's it, it just it gives me chills. What can you say to the Bears fans? We have three more. All right, there you go. The, the fans definitely lifted us up and back into the series. Game four of the finals tonight in Chocolate Town. The Bears trail in the series two games to one to Coachella. The home team has won every game so far. We're going to roar really loud. <laughs> this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for me to be here to watch these games, and I'm so happy to be here. To say Hunter Shepard has been active is an understatement. The Firebirds offense has been keeping him busy. They're going to win. Yeah, we have faith. We have faith, right? They're going to they're gonna come roaring back. Puck is down, we're underway. Game four of the Calder Cup Finals. Hershey looking to even the series in front of a sold out crowd on home ice. McMichael to Snively. Hershey looking to draw first blood in game four. Really, that comes loose. Vecchione, he scores! Mike Vecchione off the stein and on the scoreboard. The air strike on the power play. It's 1 0 Hershey. Sometimes you need one of those to break the ice and felt really good. And you now the boys have had my back since you now I can't even remember it's staying positive and tell me to keep playing my game is gonna come and finally got a balance and kind of like a weight lifted off my shoulder. Morks to right side. He looks towards the head across back. He scores! What a feed! And Mike becchioni has got two! The Bears back in front. It's 2-1 chocolate town! Behind the goal of the near board. Ethan Frank, he's got the slot. Right wing shoots, it scores! A rocket from Ethan Frank! That goal's in two straight! 5.36 left in the second. It's 3-1 Bears! Stick down at center, dumped in. Carlson defending, left wing to the line, McCormick. Five to go. Left side, Podorowski blocked by McElrath. Centered in front. Saved by Shepard, and the Bears win! Hershey takes game number four. A sensational defensive effort. This series is tied at two, and we're headed back to California. Game six will be necessary. If we play Bears hockey, I don't think that there's a team in the league that can beat us. We've said that from game one. Um, we think if we play the right way and play physical, then we'll be set. Got the effort there, boys. Best of three now. Let's get the next one at home. Yeah. For the final time this series and this year in Chocolate Town, USA. It's game five of the Calder Cup Finals. The Giants center is ready to roar. 
One of the most anticipated games in Giant Center history. A chance to take a lead in the Calder Cup Finals. Game five, we're underway. Hey, set. Brodus down low to flicks it on that. The court, the save. He'll mop up the rebound. Alexei Brodus denied in tight. Good job, boys. Good job. It's all of it. It's uh, the coaching staff preparing us and just the whole room believing in our in our game and knowing that we can do this. It's it's a lot of fun going to battle with these guys. We are scoreless through regulation. And for the second time this series, we are headed to overtime. Huge hit. Back to check Ballenstein. Elon up the middle. To the point, Day fires, loose in front, and squirts away to the line. Day holds it in. What a play by Logan. Now a play about to expire. He's tripped. Barnes stays down. Morelli with it. Five on five. Pilon shoots. Scores! Garrett Pilon! The Bears win! The Bears lead the series! The Bears are one win away from the Calder Cup! Boys, got the effort, Chef, hell of a job, and a no brainer here. Yeah. Game number six of the Calder Cup Finals. Hershey going for the victory tonight, looking to raise a trophy for the 12th time in franchise history. Held in Johansson, far side. Snively looks the middle, Michael. He's gone! Honor McMichael! What a start for Hershey! They lead game six, one nothing! Left wing, driving in is Malenstein. Running towards the net, score! Oh, a break for the Bears! That's what we're talking about! Now it's the Firebirds that have willed their way to a 4-2 lead. Their guns are blazing there. They're going for the kill shot right now. Bottom line is that we knew going into the series that we're going to have to win one on the road. We know how tough it's going to be. We played against a team that was desperate. They wanted to come out, stay alive, give themselves a chance. 5-2 the final. The Firebirds beat the Bears. Coachella Valley stays off elimination. It all comes down to Game 7 on Wednesday. It plays on your mind. You're, you're thinking to yourself, Oh man, if I would have did this play, maybe this could have helped. And, and that's the message that we give everybody. Don't be sitting on your deck a couple weeks from now thinking, I could have gave it just a little, just, just a little more. Tonight, it is game seven of the Calder Cup Finals between the Eastern Conference champion, Hershey Bears, and the Western Conference champion, Coachella Valley Firebirds. You couldn't have wrote a, a better script to end the season for us. We've all dreamt of being in this situation as a kid. It's exciting, and uh, for what's at stake, it, it means a little bit more. This is the last time this group's going to be together. It'll never be replicated again. So I just told the guys, I said, we're a family in here. Let's put our best foot forward, and whatever happens, happens. Not a fan is sitting in this building. Winner take all. Someone will go home a champion tonight. I mean, it was a little bit nervous from the start, obviously, a game seven, uh, everything on the line. Tennis will shoot to the goal. Shepard, the stick save, rebound there. Gabriel Kyle Simmel on the left wing. Looks net front, threw it there. McLeanville knocked down, swatted on goal. Decord will fall on top of it and cover. Well, the task doubly hard now for Hershey. Now down by two, still a long way to go, but against these Firebirds, this task ain't easy. Being down 2 nothing at the very start of the second, I think that's when some thoughts were probably creeping in. I think I was already preparing myself up top, like, how are you going to handle these kids? You know, like, their, their dreams are going to be crushed here if they lose this game. McMichael can't keep it in. Stolen, a breakaway. Marinsky and all alone. Shepard! Oh, baby, what a big save! 
keeps it 2 0. A shorthanded breakaway save. Remember that one if the Bears have any chance of coming back. When Hunter Shepard makes a save where, as resilient as they were, if that had gone in, I think it was probably game and, and season over. But they get a little life, I think, off of that save. Who knows what would have happened if that goes in and, and that man makes the game 3 0. Shep's been that guy for us all year. We had, we had all the confidence in him. Markstrom to Snively, down by two. Goal line, Morelli tucks it in front. They score! Connor McMichael on the power play. On the back door, he connects. 6.08 left in the second. The Bears on the board. It's a one goal game, 2 1 Firebirds. Once we got our first goal, we started to play a little bit more loose and take over the game more. Protus is centering pass, though, broken up by right. Lexi Protus to the point, Iorio! They score! LaPierre with the tip in front! Game seven is tied at two! What a play by Protus! It starts with the Decord giveaway, and LaPierre tips the Oreo shot, and we are even late in the second! Bears looking for one last shot. Decord can't stop it and hit him in the back of the leg. He can't find it. It's loose behind the goal with five left. He poked it to the corner. And game seven of the Calder Cup Finals is headed to overtime. Wow. Why not? Right? Why not? We've come this far. Let's just keep going. I wasn't nervous at all. I, I don't feel like anyone was nervous. I, I, you know, it was just like a sense of calmness and just like felt so confident in the group at that moment. Have to be careful with every pass. Over the blue line, Borgstrom. Got a man on the far side, Vecchioni's one-timer deflected high and wide. Pass to the middle, Archie there, Shipper to right pass, saving a beauty. We play on. Bears want to write a new chapter in their storied history. The Firebirds looking for that Hollywood ending for their inaugural season. Drawn in the left wing. Vecchioni with some room. Cross to Borgstrom and his feet. Pushes it behind the net. Gets around Evans. Uses his big frame. Hooked up a little bit. Borgstrom fins through him. Henrik Borgstrom centers Vecchioni. Rolled down low. Bouncing around. Borgstrom after it. It was always going to be Vex in Game 7, overtime. I love that guy more than anyone. <laughs> he is the roar. It was always Vecchioni. Uh, <laughs> I, I just couldn't believe it. It still gives me goosebumps. It felt like a dream. family there it was it made it all the more special it was just oh, it was amazing the fact that we get to be champions together forever is something that I will always always be thankful for now I would like to present the Jack Butterfield trophy that goes to the most valuable player of the Calder Cup playoffs he played every game, and he was the backbone of this hockey team, Hunter Shepard. I mean, you won a championship with a group of guys, and you know, it's something that you, 
tell your grandkids about yeah, it's something that no one can ever take away from you. And that's, you can't, it's hard to find things like that. Dylan Makarov, come and get this call to come. been a heck of a journey. A lot of emotions. It's a, it's a tight brotherhood we have in that room. These guys now have the experience of winning a Calder Cup. Everyone wants a winner on their team and so it might make guys make that next step to the NHL just to have that under their belt. You know, what's a regular season game in the NHL going to feel like? It's going to feel like pretty easy when you've played Game 7 in the Calder Cup Finals in overtime. That's exactly what the Caps culture is all about. No matter where you are in the grand scheme of, of your career, you're trying to find ways to get better. It's no different for me, it's no different for Connor McMichael or Alexi Protoss or Alex Ovechkin. How can we get a little bit better in what we do? It's such a driven group. They want to be highly successful and translate that into, into winning hockey games. just been enjoying every single moment. See the fans welcoming us back to Hershey was, was just unreal. It doesn't feel real and I don't think it will for a couple more weeks. And I, uh, But yeah, champion for life is, is a pretty good term. You see all the banners, you see you know, all the history in the rink, all the pictures that you see walking down the hallway, you want to be a part of that. And it's been a long journey, a lot of work has been put into this, and we're finally here. I don't know, it's just like hard to explain being a part of something special, and it's just been such an amazing journey. Ha, <laughs> ha,